capillary capillary action capillary action is using surface tension to raise the level of water I saw an experiment on Blue Peter. You've seen the video about Blue Peter, my video about Blue Peter. I saw a, a school children's experiment back in the late 70s, early 80s. And they, they were using capillary tubes. What they got was they got a container at the bottom. It was about 10 meters long and around about 500 mil wide a trough and it contained water and into that container they'd put capillary tubes and around them they'd grown vine type plants yeah. and the capillary tubes and the, these plants were grown in the trough as well in the container as well there's all stuff growing in the trough at the bottom yeah and the capillary tubes took the water from the trough up to the top and up the top there there was another trough and the capillary tubes took the water up there it was about 3 metres, just under 3 metres, 2.7 metres or something like that because 3 metres was the maximum and the capillary action drew the water up these tubes and they got the water out of the capillary tubes into the trough at the top somehow and then they grew plants at the top without pumping it up and the amazing thing was about this thing was that they they hadn't had to use any electricity any petrol any fossil fuel at all it was just through capillary action that they got this water to rise at the top and they got the school children in the school doing this and they brought the experiment into the Blue Peter studio to show everybody what they'd done And it was working, and you could see the drips, it was drip, 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 and the water was filling at the top, and then, there you go, the plants at the top were, were using the water up. And it wasn't like a perpetual motion thing where they were bringing it around, but they, they could have easily done that. They could have just pumped the water up to the top, fucked the plants off, had a trough at the top, with a hole in the bottom of it, like a um, drain, a uh, sink plug or an automatic sink plug or something you just pull it out let it fill up and then pull the sink plug out let the water go down the uh, uh, the waste tube and in the waste tube they could have a little uh, water turbine and loads of capillary tubes and powering the water turbine and then the water turbine could have been powering a little electronic generator you could have a little bulb on it which would make sense to the scientists anyway I saw this and I saw, um, then I went to college after this because this was around the primary school and high school. So, uh, no, primary school and high school, all that. Then I went to uh, college, then I went to technical college and they started teaching me about electrics because I was a garage mechanic. And they were teaching me about rectification of sinusoidal AC waveforms. Well, it was very interested, and I was just listening, do, 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 and do, doodling in my book, and listening to the teacher, taking it all in. He was making us draw these diagrams, because obviously to pass the exam, you had to, you had to be able to draw a rectification circuit and put all the diodes in the right, right areas and what have you like. It. Oh, yeah, it's drawing, mate. Uh, whatever. <laughs> I'm never going to uh, take a rectifier to bits, and who gives a shit, you know? Well, it is a rectifier, mate, test it, take it to the electrician and get it to test it, I'll just take it off and say, yeah, the rectifier ain't working, obviously, because it's not, it's not coming out there, so, uh, uh, I'm not coming out there, rectifier, test it, I'll put a new one then, yeah, it was a good guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I listened to that, it suddenly occurred to me that, hold on a second, you're sticking 12 volts and... Sorry? Yeah, you're sticking 12 volts or 14 volts up to 14 volts and 
45 amps through this fucking rectifier and 90 amps through this fucking rectifier and you're going to go through three diodes in this direction and then when the uh, sonosaur wave dropped below uh, the threshold of zero down to the negative numbers because it's alternating current it goes positive, negative, positive, negative once it got below the zero um, then obviously those diodes that were taking the positive energy uh, would be blocking it and it went into the negative energy we stuck it into some other diodes which um, dragged the negative energy that way and the third set of diodes rectified it all into one lot of circuit coming out so you had uh, a positive set of uh, diodes and a negative set of pipe diodes and a DC set of diodes and I was listening to all this going on that's not how he explained it by the way, this is how I interpreted it that's not how he explained it, this is how I interpreted it so you've got something in the centre three in the centre yeah, and then you've got three down here and three around here so these ones here took the positive these ones here took the negative and the negative ones were blocking negative energy and the positive ones were allowing positive energy and the negative ones were because they were blocking the negative energy it was converting that to positive energy and this is not how it's explained yeah but the negative ones the ones that were controlling the negative circuit were controlling the negative energy and con con converting it into positive energy so you got a constant flow of positive energy coming out of the um, alternator instead of positive negative positive negative positive negative because you needed to order it it needed to be in order for the new electronics that were coming through AC electrics yeah, yeah there we go been fantastic awesome that's house electrics right but DC electrics these little micro processors and what have you you cannot stick alternating current through it your TV has 240 volts of AC current going into it you'll find it's got a, a regulator in it and a rectifier inside it and the rectifiers are just very little, little black objects. Um, piece of paper here, nothing on it there. A rectifier, a big, small rectifier, can be this kind of size. Alright, be like that. That's the size of a small, well, medium sized rectifier. The ones on the alternators controlling 45 amps and 12 volts which is a lot of current, lots of watts right. something controlling a um, car circuit is around about on average around about this size, I'm just going to put a little bit of 3D object underneath it just so you can see a little bit of 3D object, that's about the size of a car rectifier that's about the size of something inside your television Yeah, you get, you get the size difference like yeah well, average size. Some are bigger, some are smaller. You get diodes which are about that kind of size. Yeah, they just the hole in the centre there, like you know, the end of your finger. You get nine diodes the size of the end of your finger on average. Again, smaller as we get more technology, we get smaller and smaller and smaller. But on average, that's what you're looking at. And that. I can explain to you with the positive energy and the negative energy. It isn't exactly what it is, but it, it, it sort of tells you. You get a, a zero volt mark, yeah? And above the zero volt mark, you've got positive energy. And below the zero mark, you've got negative energy. And an AC current sort of comes in here, starts down here, comes up, and then down, and then up, and then down. And what they actually do in it, they put three circuits inside the alternator is what they actually do yeah and every single time the uh, and they overlap them and they just cut all the negative energy out all that negative energy all the below zero voltage so it's negative negative energy they just cut that out and just let the positive energy flow and yeah, you have three circuits that's an alternator yeah, that is exact, that's exactly what happens inside the alternator and what they do is they um, Oh, I'm going to have to do another video on top of this one. I'll do another video about sinusoidal waves. Alright, we'll do that now, because we're coming to the end of this, so I'll do a sinusoidal wave one for you. Yeah, sinusoidal waves. <coughs> really pissy 